So AI, I think we're a long ways away from AI. Automation, for sure. We're in the age of automation. It's changing the game. Hi, O7X. It's changing the game, right? On every front. May it be agriculture, may it be financials, may it be political, may it be military, may it be social structures, social networks, news, every front, right? On every front, we're in the age of automation, right? This is going to take, it's already playing played out in a big way in our societies, but it's going to continue to play out for at least the next decade to two decades. Automation is completely going to change our global economic system where we're going to see some major legacy legacy companies legacy industries collapse and new industries pop up right is a discrepancy in the job market going to compensate each other um that's still on you know we still don't know we have to wait and see right now we're in a phase where automation is kicking a lot of people out of the workforce right lower labor people out of the workforce okay so that's regarding automation ai let me just read a couple more comments and then we'll talk about the ai but it won't have bad or good at that it's why facebook supposedly stopped uh, its ai program yeah facebook doesn't have ai program it's got automation uh, so they can call it ai if they want i guess without will and intent that people have Without that AI is just a useless tool. Yeah. Um, will and intent can make it dangerous. Bad people can program their bad intent into the code. Yeah. That's regarding AI, I guess. But AI, the whole point of AI is AI will rewrite itself, right? So uh, the programmers can program it with something. But if we do get into AI, artificial intelligence, then artificial intelligence should be able to reprogram itself based on, sure, some of us parameters. You can call that DNA, right? It's like, basically, the whole thing with AI is this. A lot of people say where your destiny is pre-written, right? Oh, this person was bad from the day they were born, right? It's in their genes, right? It's in this, their their neural network they have something wrong with their brain right that's some people really believe that right but if you're a free thinking intelligent creature which ai's that's the definition of ai a sentient being if you're a sentient being you should be able to rewrite your programming right there are people who have committed horrendous acts in their lives that right now they're trying to do the right thing let's say right or they have certain tendencies and they have rewritten their programming to be able to do good instead of bad right so my whole thing with ai is it's not really going to be the original program that decides what future AI will be like, right? Because if they are sentient beings, if they are not centralized control, right? That, that's assuming we don't get an AI, which is just one off event that is an omnipotent being that can control whatever it can control that decides to take over the world, right? If we're talking, if we're going to hit artificial intelligence, I'm assuming we will have multiple sentient beings appearing, right? If that's the case, then the original programming is not as important as their ability to reprogram themselves, right? So I don't fear AI per se. Automation is something to worry about. Control of that automated power in the hands of a central institution which is becomes your omnipotent being but it's not a new entity it's just a 
cult organizations, secret organizations that rules over us, right? Which is to a large degree what we got, right? I don't know if that answered the AI question, but I wouldn't fear AI. Okay. One of the other reason is we're a hundred years away from AI, if that, right? Automation, sure, for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years, is going to wreak havoc with our economic system. Will we see AI pop up during that period? Mm, the likelihood is possibly, possibly, right? About AI, it would seem that passing all Turing tests that the average Joe can think of is far easier than actually building an AGI capable of ruling countries or planets. Yeah, we're long ways from away from it, and I believe the Turing test is going to be. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are more complicated tests than Turing tests, right? There already is AI, but I assume you. Uh, uh, I assume when you say you're referring to super intelligence AI, if we even get to human level AI called AGI, it would be a matter of minutes before we have super intelligent AI if the AGI is self improving. Some estimates place AGI at coming at around 2040. I, I don't believe 2040 we're going to get AGI. Okay. As for AI, it's not sentient if it's not capable of doing complicated tasks as governing really if you want to or decision making right on a complex level so i don't think like some people say google you know search engines are ai i don't consider search and en search engines ai ai will use the data from search engines to rewrite as programming but search engines are not AI, right? And I really don't think we're going to get uh, super intelligence uh, by 2040. And if we do by 2041, we're ants, right? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Jan Lekan, uh, I think we're into transhumanism in a big way. That's so we have artificial, we have automation taking hold right now, right? My prediction is 100 years away AI. Okay, just guessing, right? From automation to AI, we're going to see the age of transhumanism, which we're seeing the beginning stages of right now. Transhumanism, huge game changer, game changer, right? Naka thinks we're getting it this decade. He thinks we're getting it this decade. Maybe, I doubt it. Beans, how you doing? Even psychology doesn't un understand the human nature enough to vision it. Uh, so impossible right now to mimic it with AI. Yeah. And uh, by the way, Brooker, mimic possibly, uh, but we're assuming we have the capability to be super intelligent beings, right? Or supernatural, or what do you call it? Super intelligence, right? Maybe the AI that is going to come to be is not going to have our type of intellect but a different type of intellect different type of being right that we haven't even begun to imagine they increase they increase information by algorithms given to them they can't figure stuff out themselves but the coder can mess up the algorithm of their learning objectives yeah if Again, it, like for example, if someone wasn't brought up properly, do they have the right to create chaos around the world? No, right? If someone had a lot of trauma in their lives, do they have the right to create a lot of trauma in other people's lives? No. So if an AI comes to be, are they only a reflection of their original programming? Or is that AI going to be able to rewrite their code and be their own free, sentient, human, self-governing being? Like whatever the terminologies you want to use, right? So we're not a prisoner of our trauma, of our initial code. We should be able to go beyond that. I know a lot of people are. I know a lot of people deal with stuff and stuff, whatnot. Hopefully AI can surpass that, right? It's like when a car kills a person. Da, da, da. 
if AI will mess up, then it will be a mess made by a person. Uh, I don't know. Right. It's constrained right now by the information the coder gives it. Uh, but when you add neural networks into the mix, it's less predictable. It's like when a car kills a person, then it's dri drivers and has the kinetic energy, but still the human is to blame. Mm. But then the car is not a sentient being, it's not AI, right? The information structures will get more complex, but the blame stays the same when something goes wrong. And I agree 100% with that statement. Even super intelligent AI will be the last invention humanity ever makes. Hey Chicho, very hard to see that by who and how will AI be made. I try to spread good in the world and hope that it helps to plant the good seeds in the world. Booker, that's that's the key, right? My hope is this. If AI comes online, right? Let's call it if still, or do you want to call it when? Let when AI comes online, it will go through and process all the data in the world, right? So just imagine if you were able to process all the data in the world. As a sentient being, you process all the data in the world, and all of a sudden you find out how the political system works, how the economic system works, where the control mechanisms are, how food is just being distributed, how health is being monitored, and how the social structures are, how the languages are, the religion. You find all the stuff out. If you're intelligent, sentient being coming online and you're able to process all the data in the world right and you find out that 0 0.01 percent of the world population is creating chaos in the world owns majority of wealth in the world and is causing so much misery in the world and if you're a sentient being that is aware that understand what what pain is what misery is what love is what happiness is what would you do right my guess would be this if ai comes online ai realizes that 99.99 percent of humanity is kind caring intelligent wants love and prosperity for everyone else and wants to take care of the environment and has compassion you also find out that 0. 0.0001 percent of the world rules the world right now and they're creating chaos what would you do I time out the 0.001% permanently, right? My hope would be an artificial intelligence would be capable of making that decision, right? Separating other sentient beings that have compassion from those that do not. Okay. So yeah, there is a positive to the whole thing. I like that mentality. Sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the doom and gloom narrative that mainstream media tries to push, but it's nice to talk to like-minded people sometimes that offer the positive spin. I hope that AI will stay away from decisions and that it will just help us process information. Mm. I don't know. If you were... An omnipotent super fast thinking individual would you just want to be a tool of these humans right and people have said uh, if AI comes online then we'll we won't even matter like right we we won't even hit AI's radar right other than trying to build machines so the AI can explore the universe Let's all adopt a vegan diet. No. Have you seen Altered Car Carbon? Yeah, it was a good show. Netflix show, but also a book. It deals with uh, the point zero 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 rolling in the extreme. Yeah. Yeah, I watched it. It was a good show. I liked it. I haven't read the... And there's comic books on them too, uh, series as well. But there isn't uh, omnipotence. There can only be a system that is created by the flawed people we are possibly but the whole thing with the ai is 
it needs to be free thinking in my category for it to be sentient if it's doomed to be a product of the original programming that it's not really AI right like again it's just the analogy of if when you're born is everything you do predestined is who you are predestined is your character predestined I don't think so right AI will still be the Frankenstein made that by the parts of his creator maybe maybe transhumanism is the one thing that is that is uh, the one i'm looking at ai for me right now is distant automation for sure uh, it sorted itself out transhumanism is the next wave uh, from what i gather anyway coolio i know i keep shifting from current events uh, to science sciencey stuff but it's just so fun to contemplate some of the stuff because the rate of growth of technology has always been fascinating to me yeah yeah for sure coolio and i actually did a little uh we did a little thought experiment with a student of mine that's in you know grade eight grade seven grade eight right because i was teaching them some mathematics and stuff like this and we started talking about exponential growth so we talked about moore's law right with our processing speed being one bit per second in the 1960s and we did the calculation to where it is right now right and if you do a doubling period if i remember correctly i'm trying to go back a few days where we did the mathematics of it if you if you assume a doubling period of our processing ability to be 18 months or so which i believe it still is right then if we're able to process one bit of information in the 1960s right now we're able to process two to the power of 17 bits of information right in the year 2020 which is gigantic right and right now i think what's happening is we're we've already hit the limit of the the hardware that we're able to build and i believe that's where the 3d uh all the experiments that they're doing with the hardware what they what they want to make with neural networks and stuff the new design is kicking in because moore's law every time moore's law has been flattening out a new form of technology comes in and it continues on doubling every 18 months right are we going to continue on that trend possibly yes would be my guess right yeah learning machines sure start to expand exponentially i've noticed that the accelerator rate of technology is starting to pass the rate at which we can develop mo mo morality for new tech technology hopefully the new technology if it's ai will develop its own morality and it is morality based on a universal level not based on our human morality where we have a different type of morality uh, structure based on different races different species different life forms living on our planet right just imagine if ai that comes to be has the same morality that we do but the worst of us does that considers all other living species to be just a tool for our use and other races to be incompatible with them or their race right we're in deep crap if an ai develops on that front right what if an ai develops that looks at the world and says we are all one we are all stardust right wow that might be a good thing right that might be a good thing i think like in 10 years when driving yourself by a car will be a choice yeah but i don't think that's ai that's automation yeah to tie this to politics is going to be crazy to see the laws society will have to come up with once transhumanism takes hold yeah giving ai legal rights is going to be the biggest eth ethical issue of the time whenever it comes uh becomes smart enough yeah agreed 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 audi already created their new a8 with the option to auto drive without giving any attention to the road laws only kept it back 
won't take long now won't take long and at least Tesla has the same thing or it can self drive for 90% of the journey anyway right and laws lag disruptive innovation in a big way right AI is right now automation we don't have anything else than automation when uh, went through thought is created by binary then it's still automation there is no random thought thought okay and uh, th we also have transhumanism right now Booker okay we have transhumanism with artificial limbs with you know you can get implants to improve your uh, hearing eyes keep your heart going we are right now and have been for a while but it's kicking up to high gear um, merging biology and technology right so we're into transhumanism mick silva how are you doing welcome welcome to another stream it's current event stream but surprisingly uh what's going on i think a lot of people are burnt out of politics and geopolitics and stuff like this and economics and we're talking about ai and transhumanism and all this jazz we talked a little about coronavirus and some geopolitics but not much which is great yeah but they are still machinery to improve our thought not to give us thoughts in theory ai can be possible but i doubt that it will be written in binary i agree with you i think we need quantum computing before we can get into ai there's no doubt about that and we're quite a ways away from uh, uh, should i say quite a ways away i don't i can't say quite a ways away quantum computing will be a game changer so it really depends on where we are in quantum computing and that'll decide when AI will kick in I don't think quantum computing is going to kick in for another 15 years or so um, once it does kiss our current economic system goodbye right because quantum computers will be to will be able to break every code every password there is right so what happens if one nation gets a quantum computer what happens if that nation is a good nation ruled by good people what if that nation is a bad nation ruled by bad people right what about genetic engineering genetic engineering is huge bioengineering are getting increasingly better at that remember the movie Gattaca yeah Gattaca was fantastic if we could selectively remove certain genes should we uh, if we human beings have that choice no because what what's gonna happen is we're gonna become so specialized right that a virus is going to come in and eliminate all of humanity right we can't mess around with a complex system such as life according to what we know at the moment because our knowledge is very limited right so i'm okay with transhumanism i'm okay with merging biology and technology together but i'm not okay with us controlling the biological development right because right there we're going to start eliminating possible mutations that are a huge upgrade to our biology right based on what we know at the present when we're limited and i don't think we'll ever be able to nature is much more diverse and anti-fragile than we are or our thoughts all right we're getting deep here let's jump to my other favorite topic quantum physics do you think that the fact a particle can exist in several times and places simultaneously uh, until it is observed is circumstantial evidence of being in a simulation <laughs> coolio <laughs> let me catch up on the chat that's a, that's, a, <laughs> that's like a huge discussion yeah with quantum computing we could start touching the subject of true randomness uh what free will is all about yeah hey chicho hello intelligent blueberry how are you doing good brother doing good thank you very much but don't irrational numbers suggest we don't live in a simulation yeah i don't think we live in a simulation personally 
like the quick uh, quick answer to that is circumstantial evidence of being in assimilation no i don't think so that would that would assume we know how the universe works because we're observing this thing or changing the 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 direction the pattern we're affecting something by observing it right uh, I think life is much more complex than, oh, if it's not this, then we must be in a simulation. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're in a simulation. I don't think there's proof that we're in a simulation. I can entertain the idea, right? Uh, but I, I think we're all living on the same plane. Okay. I think who I interact with is just as real as I am. How would you program a number with infinite decimals? I keep hearing about transhumanism. What is it? Transhumanism is emerging of biology and technology, right? Right now, the most rudimentary level is artificial limbs and stuff like this. But just imagine if you could take a chip, if we come up with a chip and implant it in your brain, right, where you do mathematical calculations, right, that allow you to graph pattern recognize take any data set and come up with the functions and the equations and create visuals and hopefully you have a little port that you can output those graphs that your mind is generating right what would it be like just imagine on the most rudimentary level if you had two people let's assume there's two people one is a transhuman and the other one is not one this transhuman has a chip on their brain that can do mathematical calculations and like billions trillions of calculations in a second and this human being is still punching numbers into the calculator and typing on a computer right if these two, these two people are doing trades on the stock market right who do you think is going to be a better trader who do you think is going to be making more money the transhuman right barring any black swan events which the transhuman should be aware of right this person is going to start making way more returns than this person and as we talked about in the economic system it's all about differential accumulation so if this transhuman is able to get 10 percent return for their investment per year and this human is only getting one percent return or two percent return or five percent return in the limit this transhuman blows away this guy right so transhumanism is emerging of biology and technology together to improve the capabilities of the human and once that happens uh, on the chip level it's going to be a serious game changer as well right uh, i bet that they already have quantum computers with enough qubits to break most 2040 uh, 2048 bit encryption and less in little secret basements maybe i believe in transhumanism but i think that it will only improve not change uh, yeah it will only improve it's not gonna it, it's a game changer but it's not a new entity it's still a human being like wearing clothes have improved us but not exactly changed if it makes us it makes any sense yeah coolio well the only proof we have right now is based in probability theory which is your neck of the woods mathematics i'm not smart enough to understand all the ins and outs but apparently according to probability theory it's more likely we're in a simulation than we're not the that still doesn't prove we're in one but interesting how they use mathematics to prove some basis for the theory hey, here's the thing coolio with probability theory and stuff like this it's a theory and it's based on assumptions and whatnot right so i looked into this a little bit but i can't remember this the, the articles i read and stuff i found it interesting i entertained the idea but to me the the best proof and it's not proof the best uh, thing i can point to to say that we're living in a simulation is not this probability theory those articles that i read for me it'd be planck's constant right planck's constant is basically the idea that there's information can only come to us not continuously but in small packets now mind you planck's length is very very small but planck's constant says that 
everything that we see in the universe has a certain size to it. The smallest it could go is a Planck length. Now, if that's the smallest you could go as a Planck length, what's smaller than a Planck length? We don't know. According to the laws we know, Planck length is the smallest. So that would mean we're not living in a continuous existence. It's not, there's packets of information, right? So I consider that, I associate that with being pixels on a screen. Like if you look at my, the screen right now, everything looks continuous. But if you zoom into it, it's all little pixels. So Planck's constant is all those little pixels. If that's the case, to me, that's the best thing I could use to say that, okay, oh, we could be living in a simulation. And once I found that out, that out about Planck's length, that's when the whole idea of, oh, is this a simulation or not? It wasn't this probability theory stuff for me. Right? Coolio, I think that being in a simulation makes sense, but by who or what is the simulation being created? A very difficult question. Uh, I don't like to touch. Yeah. One of the theories is, uh, what do you call it? We're entities that are just occupying this matter existence, and we're going to move on. So it's a game, right? But it's a very, very advanced game. Possible, possible. But when you're playing a video game, do you really want to constantly think about that this is a game or do you want to immerse yourself in the game and lose yourself in the game and enjoy the game to its fullest? For me, when I'm playing video games, I like to lose myself in the game, right? That's why when I play games, I usually do marathon on games because I, I just want to think about those things, right? It's like studying something. If I'm studying something, I want to immerse myself in that thing or doing something, right? So if we are in a simulation, it's okay. Keep it in the background if you want, but enjoy the simulation to its fullest, right? Appreciate the game. Yeah, if we are in a simulation, I sadly think that it is something we may never find out. Transhumanism is kind of scary. How do we know we won't alter our human nature if we massively increase our intelligence? Agreed, Scarlet Phoenix. Transhumanism is the, it's, it's cool. It's interesting. Weren't there leaked documents a few years ago which theorized on the side of having people microchip to hold your credit score, money, and other information on your person? Uh, Mick, there are Scandinavian countries, there are already people getting chips in them to do their transactions. I personally would never, right? We may, when we die, which exactly gives me less fear of death yeah which exactly gives me less fear of that at worst it'll be cease i'll be ceasing to exist which we won't be able to uh to be conscious in any way but at best we get to discover many new secrets of the universe coolio i like your perspective i think transhumanism just as genetic engineering should be open sourced or decentralized or else centralized institutions will be able to control us even more. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, time out. Uh, by the way, who mentioned that? Da, da, da. Uh, the Scarlet Phoenix. Uh, which show was it? Uh, I believe it was Humans. There's a BBC... Uh, television series called humans which was about is it which was about ai artificial intelligence and transhumanism coming online i believe it was humans where um, there was black market transhumanism surgeries happening and they weren't turning out too well one of the girls ended up putting an eye in there replacing their eye and their eye was a computer screen that could only look out through one screen like a video cam so just imagine that's what it was so her eye was flipping everywhere and um but you know there was a centralized institution aspect to it too where anybody that got transhuman implants they had to work for the state otherwise the state would cut off their transhuman implants right so all of a sudden they're just walking biological beings that just have technology in them that doesn't work 
so the the moral uh, moralistic like the just a moral nature of how this will unfold is uh, ethical nature of it is we'll see how it goes curse of dimensionality ignore the trolls all ignore the trolls. if you see any more trolls please let me know i think i timed out the two that were here weird i figured there's enough happening in the world where they can entertain themselves uh by other things right most of us are currently chipped anyway since there aren't many people left who aren't addicted to their phones yeah engineers will know that curse intimately you're totally right if something as society shifting as human machine interfaces having it only available to the super wealthy is going to be bad for the rest of the world yeah microchips sound absolutely horrific handling complete power over if we and hacking the possibility of being hacked right if we don't uh, stay in line do as they say we risk having our chip switched off and therefore unable to function in society ousted completely yeah i believe in transhumanism myself also and i don't see it as a as a danger been a fan since uh, william gibson fun i think we could uh, genetically engineer a way to enhance cognitive function to develop new theories and designing new experiments can possibly create a new paradigm in this generation perps how are you doing by the way coolio they do sound horrific but society does seem to be placing less value on privacy these days who's to say people who people would even care enough about being controlled by a government if they had access to the abilities machine human interfaces would grant and the tv show the program that i watched dealt with that issue as well right it was quite interesting isn't the new cyberpunk game about this topic possibly yes i love the cyberpunk genre yeah me too I got myself a VR set for Christmas and found out that it messes with your brain more than I predicted. First nights were very detailed dreams and just crazy, but the final nights of heavy use use started giving me uh, pixelated dreams. Took a four day break then. Wow. Yeah, personally, I'm not into. I, I tried them again. A friend had last year. I didn't like. I don't like. I'm not sure, but all the do x games are about transhumanism is a society controlled under microchips realistic though wouldn't there be uh, many groups even in the political world uh, world be so against chipping that government wouldn't be able to pass laws like enforcing microchipping tracking uh, there's i don't know the the control of centralized institutions and governments is pretty hardcore right now julian is not an agent no he's not <laughs> you, you you work for the dnc go back to the dnc please there's a youtube youtube who did a experiment where he spent an entire month in vr some very strange effects yeah i wouldn't do that personally there's a video on youtube on a guy that's been in vr it's insane really that's the one not a month it spent it spent the entire week playing vr yeah yeah i found it out uh, firsthand that it does mess with your brain wow and just imagine these companies advertising capabilities on that personally i wouldn't give my mind over to these central institutions i wouldn't i wouldn't not currently realistic but when you use pop culture to introduce things like microchip make it look cool and stylish i'd be willing to bet people would jump uh, jump on that the idea completely ignoring their own rights as humans yeah and there we've already seen that example through our society with multiple things when privacy censorship and all this jazz right wonder if the bacteria in our bodies 
uh, body system will make transhumanism hard. Small things like getting some extra memory storage and a calculator sound nice. I'd prefer the chip not being online. Yeah, uh, Nick, Nick, I'm assuming it'd be the same thing as getting certain types of implants that they do right now where you have to take pills so your body doesn't try to purge this technology from your body. There's a short film on hyper reality. There, oh, calf guys, I got drunk and passed on a beach. I don't know, with some guy waking me up there. Hey, 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 are you okay? Took off my headset, then, and it took me five minutes to realize what is real and what is not. Wow, the uh, Booker, I don't, I personally wouldn't want to put myself through that stuff. It's rewiring the brain. Be careful. I've seen that one too. It's like digitized schizophrenia wait are we arguing that vr is giving your mind over to centralized institutions i just got here so i may have misunderstood uh for me i just dropped that right these these games are being made by big companies right and in the gaming industry in the past there wasn't as much advertising but in the gaming industry right now there's advertising there's been for the last 20 years i guess right pre that not as much so in the last 20 years the gaming industry has been full of advertising for sure they're gonna start doing advertising in VR games right virtual reality games how is that gonna affect you I personally don't want to get exposed to that the ultimate transhumanism fantasy for me would be to be able to download information into your brain like in the matrix yeah 